The company, formerly known as Twitter, was slapped with a $350,000 fine for refusing to follow a search warrant for former President Donald Trump's Twitter. So this is in relation to Jack Smith's, uh, Special Counsel Jack Smith's uh, investigation in to the former president. Newly revealed court documents showed that Special Counsel Jack Smith had obtained a search warrant months ago for Trump's Twitter account. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, now, the documents obtained by Politico showed that Smith's teams of prosecutors went to Twitter in January with a search warrant for data and records pertaining to Trump's account. And uh, since Twitter was under and still is uh, under Elon Musk, um, they refused to comply. Elon! Elon! Well then, so apparently uh, Twitter wanted to disclose the search warrant to the former president, let him know that, hey, they're searching your Twitter. Uh, and of course, uh, the investigators didn't want that information to get out. Uh, and so the reason for that order, of course, was concerned that if Twitter had told Trump about the search, it would have interfered with the act of investigation. Um, the Department of Justice even considered Trump a flight risk. Wow. Uh, so now that act uh, allows the government to seek a non-disclosure order, uh, which directs service providers to not to notify any other person of a warrant or order's existence for such period as the court deems appropriate. So uh, the specific reasoning, I already mentioned one, uh, but there are five different uh, things, uh, pieces of a criterion for it. Um, one, if letting the person targeted by the search warrant would endanger the life or physical safety of an individual, uh, if it would, uh, as I already mentioned, uh, aid the person in fleeing from prosecution, flight risk, uh, if it would cause the destruction or, of or tampering with uh, evidence, if it would uh, lead to the intimidation of a potential witness or witnesses, uh, or otherwise seriously jeopardize an investigation or unduly delay a trial. So all of that uh, is to say that they could have all applied <laughs> in this case, in my opinion. Um, if you know Trump, any of these things could have happened. Again, if in danger of uh, physical safety of a person, mm, well, look at January 6th. There are a lot of people that were in, you know, threat of physical uh, danger, um, including former Vice President uh, Mike Pence. Mike Pounds. You know, the whole crowd chanting, hang Mike Pence. In response to Trump's tweets uh, that Trump, or uh, I'm sorry, that Pence uh, didn't have the courage to help him steal the election. Mm, yes. I could have been relaxing at Mar-a-Lago or in the south of France, which I would prefer being in this country, frankly. Uh, the irony is France is kind of socialist. Uh, okay, so now one of the charges against Trump, of course, uh, in the Mar-a-Lago documents uh, case is that uh, he obstructed justice by ordering workers to delete a server filled with surveillance footage, you know, of them moving boxes, him moving boxes uh, filled with uh, things that he was supposed to have returned to the National Archives. So as I mentioned, pretty much all of these things could apply to this case as a reason for this order. And so I think they had good reasoning here. And... Why I point that out, uh, you know, for one, I'm pretty consistent when it comes to privacy issues. And this could potentially have been a privacy issue. I have problems with governments getting companies to hand over personal data to law enforcement. We've seen that play out uh, in states that have banned reproductive rights, uh, where Facebook uh, or Meta would, would hand over data for people, you know, when it comes to talking about getting abortions or... Uh, accessing, you know, uh, websites that, that, you know, tell them of, about how to get uh, abortion care, abortion services, or morning after pills and things like that. So I do have legitimate concerns on this, uh, on the ease of getting these kinds of warrants. That said, Donald Trump is the target of a legitimate investigation <laughs> um, for actual crimes. Uh, and... They went through the process. It's not an easy process to get a search warrant for the former president of the United States. So, you know, this isn't a situation where here you have the government preying on a, somebody who has absolutely no power. Donald Trump has still has a ton of power and a ton of resources. Uh, and so 
Now, it was a uh, they they did go through the appropriate process to get a warrant, and, and again, you have to prove uh, you have to have probable cause for that. You have to prove that the data is important to your criminal case, and they it seems like they did all that. Uh, now that said, the reason that Twitter delayed in producing this data that they were asking for is again because they wanted to tell Trump. Why did why do you want to tell Trump so bad? I, well, free speech, free speech, free speech. No, no, no. I have a pretty good authority uh, based on some of the stuff that uh, Elon Musk has done before. He is not actually uh, for free speech. He's just for speech that helps the right wing. So now at the end of the day, by the way, <laughs> this kind of blew up in their face uh, because Twitter ended up complying with the order after a judge sided with Smith's team. Though Twitter ultimately complied with the warrant, the company did not fully produce the requested information until three days after a court order deadline, uh, which, of course, they ended up racking up fines. The district court thus held that Twitter uh, held Twitter in contempt and imposed a three hundred fifty thousand dollars sanction for the delay. So, yeah, they ended up uh, paying for it and then handing over the data anyway. So that's not going to get you any any high marks when it comes to the type of people that uh, Elon Musk has cultivated as a Twitter base, as a user base on Twitter. Um, in fact, he's going to be needing a lot more Twitter blue subs to make up for the $350,000 fine. Uh, however, it seems like the only people that are willing to pay right now are neo-Nazis, crypto scammers, and people who post child abuse imagery. So uh, good luck with that one, uh, with your clientele, who also happen to be very, very pro MAGA. And once they find out that you ended up handing over the data, I'm going to guess that they're not going to be too happy with you. 